Welcome to Rising Above with Shereen Rivera. I'm your host and ghostwriting consultant, and today I have none of the other than Steve Bacon, life coach, and just warning you, he's a lot, so. A lot, <laughs> a lot, a lot. So, so we're just gonna I get into it. I apologize up front. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just talk about your story first and how okay. you became a life coach. Yeah, so um, the short version, at 18 years old, I put a loaded gun in my mouth and pulled the trigger. I was in a very depressed state. Um, for somebody to get to the point where they're ready to take their life, they have to have lost all hope. Like, you really can't see things getting better. Like, the reality that you're experiencing at the time is just going to be it forever. And the thought or the concept of being dead is better than staying alive. That's where I was at 18 wow. years old. And fortunately for me, the gun misfired. Uh, but it was at that point I realized I didn't want to die. I just didn't know how to live. Mm. And so that sparked a quest um, that's been like 15 years now just to figure out why human beings become the way they are. What's our operating system? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We have different experiences which is what a lot of people point to to say, oh, I'm not the same as you, because we, we base it on experience. But our operating systems are the same. Our belief systems are the same. Our, our as needs. far as operating the same. Our, the human needs are the same. So I wanted to understand what was true for all human beings. Why is one person born in a you know, crappy background, or, or I'm trying not to cuss on TV, see? <laughs> this was a lie. <laughs> okay, I was trying to figure out why would one person be born, you know, in a crappy neighborhood and become this awesome success, and then one person would be born in a life of privilege and then become an addict. Like, what is the difference? What separates us at birth? It's not that some people are part of the lucky sperm club. I have a a, a true belief that. Our the God's original design is the infant child. Everything that we need, we were born with. Mm -hmm. Like the seed of an apple tree, it doesn't need anything. It doesn't need motivation. It doesn't need life coaching. It doesn't need anything but soil, water, and time, and sunlight. Mm -hmm. That's all it needs. Everything it needs, its full potential is already inside of it. All it needs is the right environment. Well, same thing with human beings. We were born with everything inside of us, and we can see it inside the infant child. Then how, how do we lose that? Consciousness kicks in. When consciousness kicks in and we start to become self-aware, right, that's when we start looking, that's when we start paying attention to, to the things that really don't matter. I, I give an example. Think about, you have children, right? Yes. Okay. So think about like ages zero to four. Mm -hmm. There's no fear of failure. There's no fear of rejection. There's no self-consciousness. They are just, they just go, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then it's at that time period where our parents like love us unconditionally. We don't have to do nothing. You know, when you're a baby, the new smell, like the, the baby, even the poop smells good. Like <laughs> the, you don't have to do anything yeah. to get love as a baby. But then the new baby smell wears off. And the child is sitting there going, what happened? What's wrong with me? What did I do? What did I do wrong? And now our parents start giving us conditional love or what they call discipline. Mm -hmm. But children, we call it conditional love. If I do what you want, you give me all the intention and say, you're such a great child and you give me ice cream and cakes and candies and cookies, right? You take me to Disneyland. But if I don't do what you want, then all of a sudden now, I'm shunned. Get away from me. Go to your room. Don't talk to me. Now I start to f want acceptance. As that's when I start craving that acceptance. And validation. And validation. And so from that point on, we, start to we make decisions about ourselves. And that's the whole point of belief theory is that at a very early age, we make a decision about who we are and how we fit in the world. And that becomes our reality. 
So tell me more about belief theory. So belief theory is a just it's a simple transformation strategy. That's not it's simple, but it's not easy, mm -hmm. right? 15 years of studying personal development, 15 years of going from seminar to seminar, reading book after book, hiring coach after coach, therapist after therapist, like 15 years, I started to find a pattern of what really mattered. Now, I don't know what kind of people are watching your show, but I just got to expose a few truths. There's a lot of wolves out there profiting off of people's pain. And this is very true. There's a lot of wolves out there profiting off of people's pain. I was in the worst state of my life. And I would pay so much money to get in these rooms with some people. Out of desperation. Out of desperation. Yeah. Only for them to sell me the next thing. I thought what I just paid for, I was going to get the answer. So... Out of my own frustration, I started to look for, okay, what's really true out here? And I noticed that everywhere I went, I kept seeing beliefs, 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 but everybody would talk about beliefs. But nobody would actually go into what a belief was, how it controls my life, how does it show up, how do I change it? They would just say cute stuff like, you got to change your beliefs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> how? So you teach this method to your clients on how to change their beliefs? Yes. I actually take my clients to school mm. on what a belief is and how it shows up. I mean, we get down to the even the point of the word. In the word belief, B-E-L, I failed school, B-E-B-E-L-I-F-E, <laughs> -E right? E-F. E, yeah, that, that, that too. <laughs> yes. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go on a quick break and when we get back, let's go into I'm going to learn how to read during the break. I just want to let y'all know. I'm going to learn. Hook down phonics. It didn't work for me. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, welcome back to Rising Above with Shereen Rivera. I'm here with Steve Bacon and we were talking, he learned how to read during the break. <laughs> and we were talking about belief, belief theory. Yes. Okay, and what it is that you teach your clients. Yes, so what I was saying was, before we went to break, we break down the word belief down to its root, right? Even in the word belief, what word do you see right there? Lie. Lie. The problem is people confuse facts with beliefs. Mm. And demagogues know that. So they spit out a bunch of beliefs and people accept it as fact. If you trace the word be back to its Indo-European root, it stands for I become. Mm. So even in the word belief, you have I become lie. Mm, that's powerful, that's powerful. When people understand that my beliefs are not facts and that it's just a strong feeling that something is true. Let's talk about some beliefs that you had, that you had to shed. I'm a fraud. That was one. Um, and a lot of that came from me going from me. I went to 14 schools growing up. That's what I wanted to talk about yeah. your childhood, because that's where you and I really kind of connected on the phone call because I come from extreme childhood trauma and so do you. Mm -hmm. And you were able to really use that pain to help other people, which I really admire. So let's just talk about that a little bit. So, yeah, um, six months after I was born, my mother became addicted to crack cocaine. And as a result, I went to 14 schools growing up. I was sexually abused. Um, and... That, that led to having some really bad identity issues, right? Like, do I matter? Am I worthy? Am I feeling worthless, right? Because as a child, you don't understand why things are the way they are. There's a point where I talk about, excuse me, self-imposed beliefs. Mm -hmm. Most of the beliefs that we have on ourselves or that we, the decisions we make of ourselves, I call it self-imposed. And it's because as children, we, we look for answers or we try to, out of our need for certainty as human beings, we don't like to not know. Yeah. Even as a child, you don't like to not know. And if nobody's giving you an answer, 
then you make up your own answer with mm -hmm. your limited life experience. So we create beliefs about ourselves in order to explain why something is or isn't happening. When my father showed up when I was eight years old and took me from my grandmother's house, all I remember is my mom dropped me off the night before and some Chico DeBarge looking dude picked me up the next day. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I'm sitting here asking myself, why? Why she didn't tell me nothing? Why is my grandma letting me go out the door with this dude? Like, what's happening? You had no idea who he was. And so how does an eight-year-old process that? Yeah. Well, this eight-year-old said, they don't want me no more. Bam, now you have a belief. The women who love me will leave me, which controlled all my relationships up until I caught it. So we make decisions about ourselves and our place in the world mm -hmm. because nobody's explaining to us and correcting our perception. So we, we get a poor picture as a child, which gives us a poor perspective that produces prejudice against ourselves and our relatives. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, um, when I came out of my abusive marriage, that's when I really became aware that something within me needed to be healed, right? Yeah. And I started questioning everything that I believe. Why do I believe this? You know, and, and really trying to understand why do I believe this? Because there are some things that I believed about myself and I didn't even know why. Yeah. You know, and I think that's really important for the viewer that's watching that has gone through trauma or is going through trauma to be more aware of what they think about themselves and the world around them and to question themselves. Don't you think that? Absolutely. And people try to keep themselves so busy because they don't want to sit oh long my gosh. enough. They don't want to sit. I know I'm a trigger to heck out of somebody <laughs> right now, but it's true. Yeah. People keep themselves busy because they don't like what they think when they're alone, mm -hmm. when it's quiet. So they're constantly trying to do something. Running away from the truth. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because it's hard to look at a mirror and say, you're the reason why. Yep. That's the biggest thing with challenging your beliefs. Belief theory is three steps. Challenge to believe, change your perspective and create a new meaning. That's belief theory. Mm -hmm. That's our whole process. Every coaching session I do, we basically are going through those three steps in a conversational manner, but my entire coaching process is challenge everything that comes out of your mouth, challenge your perspective, and help you create a new meaning. And people don't like to audit themselves. It's hard to look in a mirror and say, you're the reason why. It's painful. Most people, my, my good friend of mine, D.B. Befford, I never worry. He says, most people look in the mirror when they brush their teeth, but they never look themselves in the eye. Oh, that's so true. That's so true. If the eyes are the window to the soul, most people aren't willing to look at their own soul because they don't like it. But that's the part where that's what separates the people who get results and the ones who struggle. Mm -hmm. The people who get results are the ones who are willing to look themselves in the eye and say, you're the issue. Yep, taking responsibility. It's not your fault what has happened to you as a child, but it's your responsibility on what you're going to do with it to heal, right? So let's talk about the difference between healing and coping. Because oh, I remember yes. when we spoke about this on yes. the phone. <laughs> I get so excited about this topic. Because because like I said, there's so many wolves out there preying on people when the answers are really simple. Yeah. Right? The, the, just real quick, you said it's responsibility. Mm -hmm. I want people to understand about what you said, how when you talked about it's not your fault. It wasn't my fault that I was sexually abused as a child. That's not about fault or blame. Yep. The root word in responsibility is response. Yep. The response. What am I going to do? If I'm sitting in the dark, right? If, I'm sit, if, we're, if we're in the, sitting in the room right now, and all of a sudden, Cam, my fiance, standing right over there, hey, baby, <laughs> right? If she cuts off the light, now you and I are just sitting here in the dark. Now we can, we can be mad that, oh my God, I can't believe she cut off the lights. I can't believe that we're sitting here in the dark. We can't do the interview anymore because she cut off the lights. Or we can decide to get up, walk over to the wall and turn the light on. This is people who experience trauma early on. They're sitting in the dark. The problem is they have all the power in the world to get up and go turn on the light. It doesn't matter who turned the light off. Mm -hmm. You have the power to get up and turn the light on. So powerful. We're so, going to go on break real oh, quick. Yes. When we get back. We get long winded. <laughs> we got to turn this to an hour episode. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> Oh, 
Hello, welcome back to Rising Above. <laughs> so we're here with Steve Bacon and finish what you were saying before about the healing and the coping. So there's a big difference between healing and coping. And most of the things that programs that are out there are all about coping, mm -hmm. right? Just think about it like this. The difference between healing and coping is this. Imagine have a big, you have a big trash can full of doo-doo sitting in your living room. Coping is learning how to deal with the smell. Mm. You put a mask on, you get some potpourri, right? You get some sage and some incense, right? And you mask the smell. Healing is taking the mask off, turning off all the potpourri, smelling it, and then jumping into the trash can, cleaning it out, taking some bleach and some, some Windex, wiping it clean, and then pushing the trash can outside. That takes more courage, more commitment, and a heck of a lot more stamina. How do people do that in their life, though? It's, it's, it's a, a lot about what you said. It's about going inside. Mm -hmm. Now, yes, you can hire a coach. You can go to therapy, right, w w w to get you started. But understand that even a coach and a therapist, their only job is to ask you questions. It's like hiring a physical trainer. The physical trainer can show you what to do to get right. fit and lose the weight, but you're the one who has to do the actual work. You, 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 even I tell my clients, you don't need me. You don't. You can get just as much talking to a pole as you can out of me. Because all I'm going to do is ask you questions. And when you give me a BS answer, I'm just going to ask you another question to make you clarify the BS so that you can see it for yourself. Mm. My job is not to give you advice. My job is to help you understand that you have the answers already. So, yes, then I, I have a coach, right? Because... I don't want to do it myself. I, I rather have that person I can bounce things off of and an ask me questions. But all I'm saying is that th the answers have to come from us anyway. Mm -hmm. So even if I'm just sitting here and allowing myself to just let those thoughts come and deal with them, just deal with it. Mm -hmm. When I was nine years old, don't judge me. When I was nine years old, I got angry and I punched my stepsister in the stomach. And my dad, don't judge me. <laughs> Don't judge me. This is a okay. long story. Okay. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Don't cancel her show because okay. I'm ratchet. So listen. <laughs> you did not just use ratchet on the I show. I did. I did. <laughs> okay. I don't know if you can say you can no, bleep that okay. out. No, it's okay. It's okay. I love it. Okay. So my dad said, you got two choices. You could either be on punishment for 30 days or you could take this butt whooping and then go back outside and play. My scary self, I took the punishment, because I thought of all the things that would happen or could happen or what it would feel like to take that stinging for a few minutes. So I picked the 30-day punishment. After 24 hours of being in that room, I realized I made a huge mistake. I've got to spend 29 more days in here, and it was in Oakland, and it was hot, and it was a summer, and we had no AC. And all the kids are laughing louder. They're getting ice cream and going to all the stuff that I can't do now because I'm on punishment. Here's my point. I realized after that being on punishment, that I would never take the 30 days. I would take the butt whooping because the butt whooping would only last for two minutes, but then I get to go back outside and play. And I always say this to my, my clients. I said, because you've put yourself on mental punishment for how long now? Wow, that's powerful. How long have you been in the room by yourself in the hot, steamy room while everybody else is having a good time? Because you're too afraid to take a two-minute butt whooping. Mm -hmm. Healing takes two minutes to just deal with whatever belief you created about the situation, whatever story that you made up, and whatever meaning that you gave it. Just deal with those things. Takes a few minutes, metaphorically. Mm -hmm. Compared to a whole lifetime. Compared to a whole lifetime of just coping and doing support groups and, and, and trying to just cope. And cope with a whole bunch of people all in their baggage, everybody trying to cope. Yeah, the same energy in the room. It don't take that long. Yeah takes a few minutes. Steve, I want you to tell the viewer a book or books that you would recommend for them to read to help them, that would help them through trauma and healing. My favorite book, it just came out, I think, last year or the year before last, but it was Mental and Emotional Release by Dr. Matt James. Mm. Dr. Matt James is a genius. I don't know if you ever heard of NLP. But doc, I haven't. So neuro-linguistic programming, Dr. Matt has been teaching it for over 20-something, 30, almost 30 years, right? Mm -hmm. 
It's what Tony Robbins started off doing. And early, as a matter of fact, most of his stuff now is still no linguistic programming. He just doesn't call it that. Anyway, Dr. Matt James, um, there, his, they, they invented this technique called mental and emotional release, which allows you to let go of anger, sadness, fear, hurt, and guilt in hours. Mm. And it's really catching on in the psychology world. Um, and so this book explains how and why we hold on to trauma. Like when it happens, what do we do with it? Where does it go? How do we process it? And how does it continue to show up? This book is absolutely amazing. It's called Mental Emotional Release. It's $12 on Amazon. Worth I got it. my own book, but I'm promoting that one because if I had one book that I can give people to help them really understand that healing doesn't take that long, It'd be that and if there's nothing wrong with you other than the fact that you think something is wrong with mm -hmm. you. I'm going to repeat that for some of the repeat reviews. Repeat it for the There is in the nothing back. wrong with you other than the fact that you think something is wrong with you. That's period. That book right there will prove it to you. That's amazing. Um, tell people what your message is to them before we end the episode. If you don't challenge what you believe as an adult, a child will always run your life. Mm, that's powerful. Between ages 0 and 14 we develop 80% of our worldview and our self in, our self in it. Imagine 80% of what you believe. If you've never challenged the things that you believe, the things that you say, the things that you do on automatic response, 80% of what you believe about the world and your place in it came by the time you were 14. Now just think about how stupid 14-year-olds are. Yeah. How self-centered 14-year-olds are. How know-it-all 14-year-olds are. How emotionally unaware 14-year-olds are. Mm -hmm. And to think that most people are just really big children. They survive childhood. They got longer arms and longer legs. But their mind is still that of a teenager. So if they don't chat, the reason why they're not getting the results that they want in life is because they're still operating off of a 14-year-old's mentality. And I'd like to add, it's never too late to start. No, It doesn't never. matter how old you are. It's never too late to start and take that first step. Nope. So tell people how they can find you and get a hold of you. So if you want to join us, uh, the simplest way, join us at, on Belief Theory Community on Facebook. Join the Belief Theory Community. We are a community of people dedicated to personal growth, personal development, challenging our beliefs, challenging our perspectives, challenging our meanings. We just started the group at the end of last year. We've already got almost a thousand people in the group just in a few weeks That's because great. there's people craving this environment. People are so tired of coping. They're just like, you know what? I want to know the truth. Yeah. What's the truth? Let's just deal with it. And on our new belief theory shirts, we have on the back healed people, heal people. Mm -hmm. Because so many people run around saying, hurt people, hurt people. Well, we want to change the narrative. Healed people, healed people. We are a community of people who are tired of coping, who want to just handle our stuff so that we can hold a space for the next person. That's amazing. Join us at the belief, on the Belief Theory community on Facebook. Just look up Belief Theory community on Facebook. Thank you for coming, Steve. Thank I really you. appreciate it. I appreciate you having and me. And thank you for watching.